G'day, how you going? I'm Annapolis here, your acrylic guru. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Today I want to show you artists out there how to paint a coastal beach shore scene with some rocks and dune foliage and growth on there and a beautiful sky, okay? We've got the size of the canvas up there and I'll also get some colors running up the screen what I'm gonna use in this tutorial today. I wanna to try and get a bit of realism in this painting today and show you how you can get that to happen on your canvas. So get on over here and we'll get right into it. So here's my canvas, I've got it on a portrait layout. The horizon line is over halfway, it's coming to there. Now I've drawn it in from the reference photo. The reference photo was from Dating Scout. I wanna thank Dating Scout for that. And I'm gonna show you it in a minute. Now we have some rocks here. I know what all these lines mean because I've used the reference to reference where I wanna brush. We've got a distant mountain way out there and this foreground here is in front and it's lower than the horizon line there. We're gonna have a beautiful sky. So looking at the reference, like I said, I've got my horizon line. This foreground is lower than this distant mountain. I want to get these rocks in there. We're going to have the shoreline scooting around with dry sand, wet sand, and we're going to create all this turquoise water. And I want to show you in this painting just how we get all this detail happening. It's very easy. It's not as hard as you think. I have some craft white. It's just soft titanium white. It's just a cheap poster paint. And I want to mix that with some retarder to slow down the drying time of that craft paint. And I want to get that on my putter on a brush pretty well mixed so as I can get my sky blended like beautiful oil artists get with their oil paints. So like I showed before, I've got my layout there. So I want to just map in the sky area roughly to there. Now I don't like this craft paint and retarder under the area where I'm going to detail. So I just want to simply get this on there for the sky and then stroke it left and right. There we go. Now back down to the palette, I've got my sky. So I'm going to use cerulean blue. I've got a little bit of uh, mid-tone grey and I've got, let's say, a bit of uh, red violet, quinacridone red violet to be exact. Now I've just wiped my putter on a brush and I want to get the sky colour put onto that craft paint onto the canvas there. I'll start at the top and I'll get this pushed on and then I'm going to crisscross it, get it down to my mountain area there, just like so. And I've pretty much got my sky colour there. Now I'm going to go to the tip of this putter on a brush and then simply stroke it. Get rid of some of those lines first and stroke it left and right again. And that way we've ironed out any mishaps and it just looks like a beautiful photographic sky color there. So what I'll do, I'll grab a little bit of the red violet, put into this gray here and mix up a gray red tone for the bottom of the sky. And I simply want to just get this pivoted on there I'm going to have the cloud sort of like that. I've stamped it on because I want to control the shape of this tone and this value within my sky. Then I'll give it a bit of a wipe and I want to get this swept up into the sky like so. So in the reference picture, it was kind of having that feel, that vibe about it, you know? So that's what I went for here. And that craft paint retard is allowing this to happen to the acrylic paint. Now we're ready to grab some clouds and make some beautiful clouds happen. I'll use my fan brush and a blending brush. So down there, and I'm just going to pick up a fan brush to get some clouds into my sky. So I'll start at the, uh, where are we? We'll start down the bottom, let's say. There's my sky. I want to get something along here and then billowing up from the gray and into the blue. Something there, that's a distant one out there. And I wanna get some, maybe a distant one out here. Something there. I'm just putting the very low distant ones in there and something probably right there. I'm moving my brush around to get the white off it as best as I can, like so. And maybe, I don't know, can we get some cirrus up here and just in this corner, some cirrus cloud. It's that soft, weepy stuff up high that doesn't have an edge on it. So I'm gonna grab my blending brush. I'll do these ones first, and I'll just blend those cirrus clouds to their desired shape and look. Let's start over here first. So I wanna get the top of that one 
done and then pull him down into the horizon line. There we go. Get the top of him done here. Dance, smear and then start adding turmoil and then pull him down as well. It's, well, see how I just went there and there? See how it's made that little bit of a corner there? I love that, that's looking very cloud-like. I wanna try and get this twisted though. Some more. Okay, that's looking okay. We can add yumminess to that to fix it, bring it to life. Now look at this one. I wanna keep the top of that nice and bright. So I'm gonna dab the bottom half of this cloud. Just grabbing the corner and the edge of this brush, drag it in front of that a little bit. Play with clouds is so exciting to do. And you, you, you'll be amazed what you discover just by practicing and playing around with clouds. And over to this one, we'll get him up there like so. And then we're gonna put some more in here to get them look like they're coming over our head. I'm gonna give this a bit of a drag, look at that. And in our sky, work out the rest of the clouds. So see that gray I'll put there? I'll try and bring something off that to blend in. And then a bit of a white blob here. And that other bit of gray, I'll try and blend something off that. Where's that gray? Let's try. Keep in the top of that cloud. Find that gray if you can. We're gonna add that in there anyway, if we lose it. And we wanna get some of this cloud behavior just carrying on there. I like that big bright loud bit there. I'm going to blend the top of this up into oblivion, leaving some bright glary bits as well. Look at these, the edge of this cloud, the edge there and the edge of that, it's making pockets and sockets of clouds and wonderful behavior in your sky. There we go. Now we're gonna add a little bit of weather into there just to give it some clarity and dimension. This color here, that's dried up on me, so I wanna remix that so, and I wanna get some bits of weather in the sky there. So let's say here, I wanna get something under this cloud here. Wipe the brush and kind of smear that into there. Just use a corner of his, this brush here. Watch this if I use my finger. A lot of you might forget, but you, I've seen this a lot, but I've never really put it in paintings. You have an actual gray cloud in front of a white cloud. So that's what I'm trying to do here. Just like this. That'll do. Darkening up into this one. And let's say this one here, a little bit here. I'll grab a blending brush, kill that dark colour into that cloud body. See there and here. You can sit that down a little bit if you want. Give that a bit of a go. And then we're just going to simply add the yumminess. So picking up some pure white, I might add a pocket of yumminess right in here. Something there. And uh, here we go, this cloud here. So I want to continue this cloud, the yumminess, building feathering into that grey bit and maybe on this one here. Boom. I'm just putting bits of white within it and I will simply just sit the hard edges of that white of white back into that cloud. Same over here. And this, in my opinion, gives your cloud a 3D dimension. When you sit back and look at it, you'll be seeing the actual bullshit within your painting. Which is a good thing. You can keep playing with this until the cows come home. What I might do is uh, kind of... Because that looks like an intersection where everything's open. I want stuff to sort of cross. So I'm going to try and disturb that. Now I'm just going to go to this distant mountain, get this one in there using my grey and cerulean blue and I will put a bit of the red violet in there just to get that colour vibe I'm going for. Now I'm going to dampen my brush a bit now that I've mixed that and just simply map this mountain in so I'll make it any shape I want so long as I'm covering the sky area there up here. Block it in now you got that done. I'm going to 
simply grab some of the, the darker colour there into this corner like, like that, the red violet. And if you can just sort of, I don't know, put bits of distant detail in there, distant detail like dark shadows and stuff. Wipe your brush and then play with them until you're happy, squinting your eyes, looking at a view through a camera lens or something, seeing how happy you are with that. And if anything, you would want the bottom a little bit darker than the top. Here we go, a darker colour at the very bottom. Sorry, did I say top or bottom? I can't remember. But you always want the bottom of hills and mountains and stuff in this procedure, a little bit darker. You can dry stuff as you go. Now, I want to map in the mid-ground here with the dark green. I'm just simply going for a flat brush and perylene green. I'll get this blocked in and then detail the top area. So on the reference picture here and here, which you can see there, there's some distinct rocks coming through it. I do want to have them coming through mine. So that's why I've, it's going to go about there. Something like that. I'm going to map around them first like this. Something like that. Coming along here and along there on the sand all the way over here. And then I will add the, the detail above it later. Coming down to about there. It's going to be rocks there. Now that just needs to be blocked in. Now see how I'm rubbing this left and right? If I was doing that, if that paint was already here, even though it's dried, because it's still fresh within the one day, it can lift and cause you grief. So that's why I simply don't put it in the areas where I'm doing my detail. I only do it in mainly the skies and sometimes in the water areas that I might be doing in a painting. Okay, now I'm just gonna stroke the stop start marks out of there just to get it a bit more finesse within it. And then I'm gonna grab my filbert using the same paint to create the actual detail on the top of this sitting over the sky. This is nice and dark. Now if you feel bits of this are not dark enough, just simply add a little bit of black to it. But I want some trees there. Get rid of that hard line, distort that with your canopy tops, tree tops, whatever you want to call them. I'm simply using that reference solely as a reference only. I'm not trying to copy it exact. Now I want to add the stone colours down the bottom of this landmass. So I've got some yellow ochre and I want to darken some of this up with some burnt umber. And that way I'll have simply dark, medium and light. I've created the dark, medium and light. I'll get the medium the way I want. And I want to just block it in with the medium first. And I'll block this bit of rock in here first over there. Now see when I said about the greens, you might come back and use them later because we've got to bring that over this rock. So I'm just scratching that in. And then down the foreground here. I looked at the reference and got an idea roughly where this is going to go. It's going to go somewhere there and it's going to just jingle jingle. Now this is the block in colour. I'm going to do this pretty much over the whole painting come up into the greens a bit so it's scattering up in there like that and then I'll come back and put all our details on top of these blocked in colours okay so you'll get an idea and there's a quite a big rock somewhere I, I would like to have that in there coming up there like that now I've given this a dry I want to get the blocked in colours for this lower half going to my craft paint there's no retarder in this one because I just want this to act as a colour to let the colours that I put on top of it blend together smoothly. I'm not going to have to do fine blending like I do in the skies. Now I just want to I'll start at the bottom. Now I'll get this up in there. Somewhere there like so. The, the, the colours I put on here I'll really get the horizon line the way it should be. So I've got that on there. Now I want to get the watercolours on here before this dries. I... Now I've got the turquoise here. I'm just going to put that on my brush. I've just wiped the brush. Looking at the water here, 
I've got some, see these dark bands here? That's gonna be my French ultramarine and all this blue bit will be the turquoise. I'll get this mainly where, where the shoreline's gonna be somewhere there. That's where I'm roughly gonna stop with the turquoise. So I wanna get this kissed against there like so. You can use a smaller brush as well. Get all this sloshed in. See, when we add the details, of course these lines are a bit rough here and there. That doesn't matter, they're gonna come into play later. Now I wanna get this just to there somewhere like that. Now that white paint I put under there is gonna allow all this to sort of merge the way I want it to merge. So I'm gonna pick up the French Ultramarine on the edge of my brush, on the edge of my putter on a brush, because I can then get the dark. There's a big, I can see in the water here, there's a nice dark spot there. Now this looks really loud and like, whoa, what are you doing sort of thing? But don't worry, we've got a nice big band coming here. Now I'm stamping this on in the way that I want it. We've got a nice bit of a bit there and something down here. There we go. And we can also add some darker turquoise later if we need it. Now you've done that, simply wipe the brush and waterfy that darkness into there. Grab, the, do the same thing with the turquoise. I want some deeper turquoise out here as well within that. So that blue and this deeper turquoise is gonna act like deeper water. And see, so you're stamping it on like so, and then you wanna waterfy that as well. Pull that out. Now, if you gotta add more, see how there's a solid line there? I wanna waterfy that. Bang, that white underneath is helping this smear nicely. If you gotta add more French ultramarine, by all means do it. Bit more of a darker band there, like so. And pull that in, just so we've got those values in the water. This water is simply blocked in. We've got to get over here. So I'm gonna grab me white and the burnt umber and mix the sand value just with a large flat brush. And I wanna get the mid value of my sand. You got the dry sand and the dark wet sand. I wanna mix this up. So this is going to be my dry sand and I wanna start getting this right along there and seeping into that watered paint, just gingerly blending into that water paint. Not too much in there because it's gonna have the water edge here. So it's gotta stop within reason. So I'll just go like this, bringing this all the way down to here cross that in before we get contaminated with too much blue. Get those two colours bleeding together like so. You might have to get the blue again and then just bring it back, control that edge. Because once we put the white over it, it will sink all this down. So I'm coming backwards and forwards from the sand colour. Now I'm going into the water colour. And we've got a transition of the two colours, which is not too bad. Now, like I said, all this watercolour is just simply blocked in. We're gonna add detail later. Okay. Now that sand colour that we had, let's get it back over here again and a bit of burn number in the white till it's the value. Now, I'm gonna simply add grey to that to get it the wet sand colour. So the wet sand colour is simply darker, tiniest bit extra burnt umber into that grade white mix, just so it's darker than what's on the beach itself. And I want to create one edge with detail and let the other one blend into the water. I'll show you what I mean. I want to control this edge here and let this bit just blend back. So I'm going to look at the reference and as I'm using a flat fill bit here so I can get those scallopy shapes. Now there is some of this probably all the way out here, not too much. And now I wanna start creating the wet sand onto the bank there, pull it back. Just let it bleed into that watercolor. Scrumble it with your, another brush or your finger. So long as you've got this wet sand edge. So I'm coming along here.
and let it bleed back into the water there. That's really coming out. This is all wet sand here. I didn't want to bring it down all the same way. You've got to keep remembering this perspective of everything. It's quite easy if you're not aware of it to lose your perspective. Now I'm just going to gently wipe the brush and scrumble that back into that water there as well. Just lightly and gently control it. Now stop, like I said before, analyse, see what you need. I want to get it a little more wet looking. I want to sort of pull something like that there. I'm grabbing a bit of that permanent alinsarin and getting into it. Let's see. Not too much. I wiped a lot of it off the brush. Not too much. Let's get some of that. That's looking good. Where it's a bit more closer to the water, you want to try and get that wet vibe. So that's where I'm going to put in that colour. You can probably use this to the, for the whole wet colour if you want, but I just want to look in my finder. There we go. Coming around here, I just want this wet sand more wet looking. It's not quite looking wet looking in my opinion. Coming around here. Do it in scallops. Now this is the first time I'm doing this painting. Somebody had asked how many times do I paint a painting before I film it. It's pretty much filmed the first time I'm painting it. So this is the first time I'm painting this painting from that reference photo that I found from King Scout. Now simply look at your reference. In the water I could sort of see some darker sand bits here so I'm just blocking them in as well. Everything's blocking in at the moment, getting the values there, the, the colours, the tones, the brightness and darkness of each blocked in colour. All this will be underwater here, but you need to put them in now in the blocking in stage. Let's get a bit more blocking in me darker values where I feel I want it. I want some of it coming just on that sand there, pushing that sand back. And I'm just looking at the reference, getting some, because without this dark there, it can make your rock areas there look a bit floaty. So I want that pretty much nice dark band coming out here. And then you can get this brush if you want and start making there's a, your darker values more refined, more dark bits. So I want to get them in there. Now look at that, that looks pretty thick. I'll just simply wipe my brush and then scrumble them into that water there. There we go, that wasn't too hard. That can be done. If you're a beginner transitioning to an advanced beginner, you can do this. That's why I'm teaching this painting. Darker pockets here, so I'm just getting it on there. Scrumbling, looking at the reference, trying to get real guides of where dark and lighter values are within me water. Just a little bit. Now we're ready to detail it. Before we detail it, I'm going to grab some black because I just realised there's some rocks there and the rocks make good subject matter in this painting. So I want to just look at the reference. All right, so there's one roughly here. There's one with a bit of a watery gap there and then there's another one coming somewhere here off the painting. I'm just going to block these in with the simple black and then some of them underwater can be, um, have the brown under them, I'll show you what I mean. So there's a bit of a one here, here. I'm just looking at the reference, getting a reference of where I could, would and should put these. And there's some more distinct ones right here. So I get these ones reasonably sharp at the top where they are and where they're gonna be maybe in the water. That can be a bit loose, loosey loosey type of thing bit there. See now this one here, I'm grabbing the dark watercolour. So here it is here, the ultramarine blue and the um, turquoise there. And watch what we do to that rock. It's not sitting on the water, you can sort of see under it. So we want to get some blurry bits within that rock under the water. So when we put all the white detail, you're going to see it all. Blend that to the rock. About out here somewhere. This one here's got some blurriness going under the water. 
so the black bits above the water and something here underwater that's it okay i've given everything a dry now this medium color here for the these rocks i'm going to get the darker color put the darkness in highlight it before i can add the trees over it so we've got this here now you might need let's grab some of this here this is brown let's grab a bit of black in that as well so we've got a really darker value because sometimes you need some if they're not dark enough it looks a bit wrong i've just got a small soft round brush here and i'm going to simply look at the reference and get some kind of idea just what's behind what's in front of everything you know so there got a nice dark bit coming down here dark coming down there something like that boulders here these will be sunken back with foliage and extra detail later on throughout the painting you it's like i say you analyze i'm just going willy-nilly here just trying to create some kind of darkness within all this rock area here get the bottom very dark getting some stones here this is the second color which is the darker color nice and dark coming from the bottom there up to the rock so when we get the nice trees in front of it it's going to make sense get a hold of some of that burn umber and just kind of look at the reference here get there you want the bottom of these rocks dark so i'm going to scratch that leaving the bottoms dark if I've not knocked too much of the darkness away, I'll simply put it back. So I want to get this rock in front of that one, leaving the bottom dark, just simply like that. Coming across the top of it and leaving the bottom dark. Come across here. It's the top of this rock. This one here has got some nice light hitting it, scratching around there. I'm trying to make the rocks not look so flat. Don't go to that dark bit under there because that's underwater. Now we've blocked it in. We've just used this colour. Now we're going to go to the lighter colour, which is the yellow oxide on its own. A very light, very small watch. Just scratch it in there. Let it, let it happen. And then, of course, when we put the trees, they're going to sink over this and kind of sit a lot of this down. All right, so we're going to make some rocks in here now nice there we go coming down here getting some and we'll do the same up here and i want to get i'm looking at the reference get some of that off so it's not blobby why i'm doing that up there is because i want it scratchy on the painting so it's looking more so here look i'll get some of this detailed over that rock scratching down controlling the detail you're putting in the rocks get some of that paint scratch it down into that dark shadowy bit and a nice big bright bit just peeking through there and like i said we've got to keep analyzing coming backwards and forwards don't need too much just a little bit on that one this one can have some kind of difference there not much at all really flare into a scratchy motion down into the rock there we go and these ones are more darker i'm going to make them a bit more blackish looking because they're so wet in the picture i'm grabbing the black in that brush i've cleaned that brush now i'm looking at the reference again really going to town finding out what's dark here nice dark bits Where's that black? I don't want it too heavy on the brush. I want it to be able to control dark and then scratchy up bits if I need be, okay? And that's what you need to do as well. And if, if some of this is looking a bit too wonky, it's just a matter of getting the, uh, the brighter color again and really adjusting it. But you could see what this has done just since I put this color on there from the bottom black up into your rocky areas. We'll come over to that other rock. Where it's meeting there, we want real darky bits coming in there now. This is all the blocking in stage, remember? You get all these blocked in areas done. Get some darkness coming up there. I'm looking at the rock. There are some nice sharp bits of black 
in it here and there. There we go. Some of these ones here, I want to find out which ones are the real wet ones, like this one here, really wet. And so I'm really darking it up a little bit, looking at the reference a little bit. Just making some arches there, like some individual boulder rock stones gathered along the bank here, but leaving those darks there. Don't kill all the darks. Now I want to detail this land. Before I do that, I just want to scatter some this. I'm grabbing this perylene green again, and I want to kind of just scrumble out some shadowy bits from that line there. It's not such a deliberate line. I want it to look more natureable. Now I have the perylene green, which is down here. And now I just want to simply mix that with yellow ochre. Let's get the yellow ochre here. And we'll start mixing the perylene green till it's the value that I want. And I'm going to get some of this green value and a brighter green value within that land mass. Let's see how this color is going to work first. Looking at this, I'm going to see these darker pockets of green. I'll just use this color that I've mixed now just to roughly get those colors in there. So I'll have some, you know, bits here. Now, remember how I put black there? You want to bring this just to it. Don't go right over it, otherwise it's going to not quite look the part. And I'm just looking for some pockets. Get this stamp there a bit. Now I'll get the um, forest green. We've got a lot of colours going on there. This is what will bring your greens to life, your, your, your rocks and scenery, your, your trees and hillsides there, I mean. So I'm going to start blocking it in, I mean detailing it now with forest green. Grab this cadmium yellow medium and start bringing my green to the value that I want. I'm just making sure I mix all those surprises out of there. And now I could probably come over here, get something in the sky a bit, and tinker it into that there. Tinker it into that dark bit. Come from the sky, and then tiptoe it into that dark bit. So I want this bit now, coming in front of that, acting like another bunch of shrubs and bush in front of that stone there, leaving that darkness there. Try not to get blobs here. I've got some blobs there. That's because it was a little bit too wet. I'm going to come there and scratch them away. This colour you can get a bit more detail-y, and then the colour we put over this will be the very last detail. Leave some pockets of darkness. Coming from that dark pack that I put there. Leave some good dark pockets there. Right into there. Now, if you like this painting, feel free to comment below. Tell me what you like about my paintings. Tell me how you found my channel. Now, analyze it, see what you've created, work out what in the painting you've created without knowing it. Like, I can see I've created some pockets and bits and pieces in there that I like, so I'm gonna work on that. I did dribble a little bit of this over the rock there, so when I highlight it, it'll stand out. Now grab some of this paint, and we're gonna simply just mix the cadmium yellow light for a highlighted color of that value. And try not to put white into this. So I'll start here, and the bit that I put over the rock there, I'm gonna, well oh, that's too thick and heavy nice and thin. I want to sit that over the rock. 
there we go. I'm gonna have to quickly wipe my brush, get that darker color of green and simply put back there because that's too loud. I'll come back to that, silly billy me. Coming up here, dribbling things down, sitting things back. See how I sat that tree back? I was gonna pick up another brush and create shrub types, but I'm just gonna keep it all this filbert tongue stroke for now, just so you can get a grasp of what you can do in your art journey. Now I'll come over there, that's not too bad. Bits and bobs of this in different areas to create different lays of this hillside, greenery, trees, shrubs, whatever these are. So it's open and exposed. It looks like a, an area of something different in there, of detail. Sit it down, this highlight will make it look darker. Pushing this back, tapering down. Down here, I want to get this over that shadowy bit. Dribbling down, there we go, dribbling down over that shadowy bit. This is fun to do, you just sit back and let the painting create itself. It's amazing what you can do when you know what to do. It's not a, some art, I feel, it's not a matter of knowing how to do it. That'll come to you as much as walking came to you when you were born. But it's a matter of knowing what to do. When you know what to do, the more you do it, you will get better at doing it. See how we're getting the, the darkness within there. See like here, I'm just looking in my viewfinder, that bit there, I might wanna just hit that with some light, watch what it does. And I'll dribble that down over the black. Instead of going over the whole lot, just periodically bits here and there. Slow and steady always wins the race. See how we've blocked that in, how it looked before, and then we put the final detail over it. That's how easy it is to get realistic photographic look and paintings. Now me water looks like this. Let's make it start looking like this. So I'm gonna start with the water just lapping on here, bring this back, and then start with the detail over this part. Simply using white, but hey, I don't want it white. I wanna disturb it with the watercolor, which is the turquoise. I've got some blue there. I've just got the sky color blue. And then just taint that white. So it's gonna look white, but when we put pure white on it, it's gonna stand out. So have a look at the reference. Pretty much out here, I'll get a lot of that water paint off the brush, stemming against these rocks here. Now see how that looks like white? And then coming out into the water, get this a bit brighter there. I'm just simply looking at the reference and bringing it out. Now I'm keeping my brush strokes left and right in cahoots with the horizon line. Come there, some of the water's coming onto the land like that. Bits of this, not too much out there, that's pretty far away. We'll just get mumble jumble here, so that's the mumble jumble. And then from about this point, where it's coming into focus and perspective, we can start detailing it. And like, there's the wet sand. We've pretty much got water here sharp at the top and then scrumble it back down, wipe the paint off there, scrumble it back down into that wet shadowy side, scrumbling it down, scrumbling it down. So simple. Do this again, boom, pull it down from the bottom half. Use whatever, I've just got a little flat detail brush here. Coming here now with this white colour, so about there, Put it on where you want it, wipe it off and scramble the, the water side back into the water just like that. It's creating turmoil. 
this is going to be building up. So remember we did the land, we blocked it in, we used different mid-tones and darker tones to detail it up. That's what we're doing with this water now. I'm going to pull this side back. Do a bit at a time. This is all dry paint. It's, I'm scrumbling it as I go. And I want this now coming along here to that side of the rock, behind the rock, and then pulling back into the water again. Going against that rock and whooshing around here to that rock. Fade it away, but don't go over that rock, the bottom rock, this one here. I want to create just the slightest bit of water against this rock there, okay? And then it's whooshing around here, a nice sharp bit there, and whoosh this out into the, wipe the brush. Whoosh it out into the water down to there. Don't go over that rock that's in front of all this. Now there's a big band I want to get into this wave. It's important. That on the rock, it's on the rock, on the rock. Let it whoosh over the rock like that. On the rock, over the rock like that. This dark color, remember, that's under the water. So we're going to sink that down with this lighter colour and then we're simply going to get this rolling wave coming all the way to about here so it's coming there I'm getting like that boom now I want to pull that back and you can see how this is looking like water's just and we're going to do the same here a little bit of it's coming it's right right there like that and it's got a nice bend in it get those bends the way they look it creates waves and then we're coming across here keeping it imaginary lines you got here keep them going this rock here has got some nice water action around it so we'll just come from behind there get some sink that down we've got some water here behind and then it's starting to fruition up here wipe your brush you got too much on there Ian smear it out smear it out get all this smeary just makes it look more so now I've hopefully sunken that rock under the water now I'm going to darken this color not dark this color that I'm using now this tainted white. I'm going to add more of the watercolour in it to really lighten it down a bit or dullen it down a bit so as I can get the shimmer of the wind on the water and stuff like that. We've got lots of foam building back here. Just put some on the brush. I'm going to wipe it off and try and create bigger blobs of foam here just by looking at the reference. Right against here where you might want it. Very thin though, because this is quite far away. We've got pockets of it in within these rocks here. So that colour that we had, we're simply going to start making it darker, a little bit darker, so we can add the wind on the water. Yeah, look at that. Right, look at your um, reference and work out where these scallopy bits are going sink those darker bits down in the water coming off there work out where to put them bunch of them coming up here actually i'm looking at the reference there is a nice glare right here somewhere so i'll try and get them in there i've just changed my brush so i can get this little round detail on its side and i want to try and get because I've got a lot of this to do, so I'm just going to... Let's see how this is going to work. I'm just making X's, long, flat X's. Yeah, get rid of them. 
backwards and forwards, sing them down until you're happy with the buggers. Now I've just got the pure white and um, you'll see how this is going to sit on top of all that water there, right against that edge. And down here we've got detail this stuff. Just here and there, look at your reference work out. Well, they've only got a bit of heavy whiteness there, so that's all I'm, all I'm putting it just in those sort of areas, you know. This is all whooshing around here. painting that in your picture and see how it's where it is and that's how you know where to put it it's that easy now I do want to grab some of the burnt umber and the black you know when the waters hit the sand and comes back it sometimes dribbles in bits of seaweed and nonsense so these bits here I want to kind of just make, oh that was a bit too big, something here, oh, nothing too much here, it's mainly away from there, so it's making sense being away from there, and little bits can taper out from here as well, little bits up there. Now we'll just sign this and whack a frame on it and I want to take this opportunity to thank my patrons and the members of my YouTube channel that support me every month. If you like to get perks like they do, simply hit the join tab below or the Patreon link in the description below this video and your support is very much appreciated. Okay, let's whack a frame on that and see how she looks. There we go, that's not too shabby. We've got a realistic beach ocean scene coming against the land with a headland of landmass coming out here and a beautiful sky. I know you can do it. Well, I had a lot of fun painting that and I hope you learnt something along the way. If you want to watch something else of mine, hit this video here and be sure to tell your friends if you like what I'm doing. But if you don't, you tell everybody. Goodbye, good luck and good on you.